Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail dog set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the taste of the fly. Six, six, six. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show, episode 41. It's Mike Sorg, Sorgatron, at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Uh, coming to you live from the studios, uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Hey, I did better than the last show doing that. Uh, on the line with me is Eamon, at Eamon2, please, down in San Antonio, Texas. He's the he's a commentary. You almost said, t- you almost said Tunio. Yeah. Tunio. <laughs> Tunio. Uh, he's the commentator down there for uh, Inspire Pro Wrestling, NWA Inspire Pro Wrestling. And can we say the other thing you're doing now? The other thing, well, I mean, I'm doing some writing stuff for the NWA on their on their website and on their magazine, so keep an eye out for that kind of stuff. But yeah, doing doing stuff all over the all over the NWA, awesome the National Wrestling Alliance. So awesome, nice. and of course, uh, plenty of things going on down here or up here in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, our involvement here with Sorgatron Media with a lot of local wrestling promotions, including one big show coming up this week, and we'll get that to a moment with our guest. Um, but in the meantime, big thanks to our friend Basic Sickness for the intro outro. Go check them out at basicsickness.com. You can find more from this and other shows we're doing at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and the Wrestling Mayhem Show uh, at large at uh, on YouTube itself. Uh, please like and comment if you're digging on the show and you can also drop us a line to that email address at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or the hotline 412-206-WMS0 or on twitter at mayhem show or wrestling mayhem show on facebook google plus um or the great facebook group and you can join us here live every Tuesday live 11 p.m. Eastern Time at live.sorgatronmedia.com or 10 p.m. Central Time for Amen, of course. Got to, you know, with his people. Yes. With his people. <laughs> um, so with that, hey, big show. Uh, this weekend is the International Wrestling Cartel's 200th show um i actually just wore the shirt for the hunters show that i attended back in the day um so it's really cool to to, to see a, a second milestone like that but uh, uh to celebrate that another milestone I mean, how many times has this guy been on the show uh the old wrestling mayhem show but the first time here back in studio with us is delicious jimmy demarco playing with my dog <laughs> you, you finally sent him down he's finally used to you I know it took a while. I mean, what are we? Do? They can't see what we're talking about, can they? Which dog I'm petting? <laughs> That's funny. This dog's very nice. You should have like um outfits for each show you dress them in, like a little red bandana and a top hat. We've been thinking about getting them sweaters and Lord, why are we doing this? What? What? <laughs> why are we doing this? He keeps making appearances on 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 the hell show we do. Um, so he's he's just he's just hanging out. You're I've never seen you so calm, Jimmy. Oh, I'm trying to contain myself. <laughs> um, but Jimmy DeMarco, you you uh, uh, recently just returned to uh, IWC. We'll get into that a little bit. Um, but um, it, well, first question we ask is, uh, is, is what got you into pro wrestling? I don't know. You know, my earliest memories of wrestling, I, don't, I didn't, didn't even like it. Like, I used to hate when I would go to my grandmother's house on the weekends and my uncle would be watching it, and I hated it. And then I got stuck watching so much that I started to like it. So, like, my earliest memories were uh, Lex Luger, like, slamming Yokozuna. I thought that was the first time I was like, yeah, man, I could feel that. Because <laughs> he's just <laughs> jack. Even though, like, he ended up, like, never even winning the friggin' title. But, like, mm-hmm. I liked it. I could feel it when he slammed Yokozuna. Is that your... <laughs> Was that your like? Your, was Lex Luger your Hulk Hogan? No, Ultimate Warrior was my Hulk Hogan. Like I, I mean, I had watched before then, but like mm-hmm. I was just too like I was a mindless child. Like, like eat candy and bubble gum and stuff. <laughs> Lex Luger was my first like filling meal from pro wrestling. Like <laughs> Ultimate Warrior was like my bubble gum, Macho King, all that stuff. But then War- Luger was like that T bone steak that you're like, man, I need to have steak every night. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Um, of course, he t- took a hiatus here. Uh, but how long? How long have you been in wrestling? 
I started training in November of 2003 with uh, Shirley Doan's Super Hentai, and I had my first match in December of 04. So I think it'll be 10 years in, wow. in December. Um, and I know you just recently took a hiatus. Um, uh, you you actually were out shortly after I started uh, doing Sorgatron Media with IWC. Is that right? Like That was when you were doing the last couple of cage matches, I think. Yeah, I had to leave... I lost the loser leaves match to McChesney at the end of 2010. And then I came back in August of 2011. But a few weeks leading into that show, I was working out in the training school, ICWA training Academy. So many letters. And I hurt my back on a friggin' hip toss. I hurt it like really bad. And I tried to like, get like, get through it. And eventually that's why I had to leave in like the summer of 2012. Cause it was, it was pretty jacked up. Mm-hmm. Now it's better, so it's all healthy. <laughs> I can <laughs> sit down and slow. Awesome. Um, and, and now you're coming uh, uh, back under a, a kind of a different role uh, initially here. Uh, explain the story. So you are the the um, minority owner of the company now? I am white, so I'm the minority share owner. Okay. I'm not a minority. <laughs> I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> I've been accused of being a minority before. Like when I get really tan in the summer, you'll be surprised. I can't go down south side because uh, there's always racist alcoholics who are like calling me anti-Latino names. And I'm not Latino. I just get a mean tan in the uh, summer. But I take that as a compliment because Latinos are very romantic looking people. Sexual, you know, like Antonio Banderas, Enrique Iglesias. Enrique got the mole taken off though. I, I He's hotter without the mole, but like... That mole needed to be there. Now he's like Barbie doll plastic. Yeah. But I am minority share owner. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course. Uh, and uh, so, so, so does this mean uh, we're going to see you more wrestling or, or just kind of just. I'm, I'm retired. You're, you're, fi- you're still officially show. retired, right? Yeah. If you go on the website under the. Uh, roster i guess i'm on the non-wrestling personality list i think but like my picture looks like i could wrestle because i'm shirtless and dripping there you are there hey look at him. he pulled that up quick are you on there no i i don't think i'm on there we need to get you and hard ass <laughs> hooven on there <laughs> of course hooven the uh the, the 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 ringside and uh cameraman yeah uh still photography his his arms are so jacked up <laughs> <laughs> It's like a mandatory thing now that I'm a minority share owner. Like I'll patrol the locker room before the shows, and I'll I'll just feel certain guys' arms. If there's not growth show to show, then you know what happens, sword. I you know I stay I stay clear of the locker room. As the, you know. the switch. You last, get the last, switch. last month was the first time I attended the pre-show <laughs> meeting, so I, I kept saying like I should do that, so I know what's going on out there. But something tells me maybe I shouldn't. Um, <laughs> So so I you know big weekend two two hundred uh I can want to say episode uh two hundred show for uh, uh IWC Hell, last time last time they flipped the flipped the, the 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 counter on this one Norm Connors was in charge I believe or, yeah in, uh, December of oh seven yeah uh they, they did that with a big two night show we have a lot of people coming back I got a piece of history here I think I gave you the heads up that I have my I had this um oh no but. For those on audio, this is the Dream Machine vest. If you want to, well, we can kind of get. Oh, this thing smells. I didn't realize this thing. This thing smells kind of funky. Uh, like Tom Tom Browski would never wash that. He would probably wants every ounce of sweat and like everything for historical reasons. Well, yeah, I, I can you explain? Uh, do you do you? I imagine you know the history of this. You probably know it. You probably there firsthand for a lot of it more more so than I was. Well, yeah, that's the outfit that Tom Browski used to strip in before shows. <laughs> He would, uh, Norm had this cake that, uh, I don't know, it was a car, it was like a wooden cake, but it looked scary. It looked like a Trojan horse that they used in the movie with Brad Pitt. Like a, it looked like it, it looked like a cake, but it looked like a cake from hell. And they would wheel it out, and Norm would be talking, not acknowledging the cake, and all of a sudden the cake would bust open, and Dombrowski would be wearing that vest, doing like moves that you didn't think he could do because of the way he walks. He didn't seem that limber, that nimble. And he'd like shimmy the the vest off like that, and everybody would kind of be grossed out because like he was too good. But yeah, that's what. Well, that's... 
I didn't know that side of the story. Um, aside from that, this vest, uh, the uh, what was his name? The Dream Machine, Dustin Ardeen. This is this is featured uh, right now on IWCWrestling.com in the uh, the most bizarre. Uh, 18 most bizarre things in IWC history. They're doing a good job with those articles this week. Dombrowski yeah, it's Dombrowski, man. He's a machine. Um, but this thing, uh, you can see in the picture on the site, uh, this thing that I hold in my hands, uh, uh, it's, it's been in pictures with uh, the now Corey Graves, uh, formerly starring James, James Keenan. It's been worn into the ring. Former, I've seen former cameramen before I started working with there wearing it. Uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It's been in Abdullah the Butcher's mouth. <laughs> hey, I don't want to touch that thing. Yeah. <laughs> I was, was going to yeah. say if you wanted to wear it, man, for the show. But, no, I ain't no. wearing that. No way. I got to go home to a baby. I don't want. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to shower if I wear it. But... I, probably, I should probably shower before. Uh, so I've been apparently. Um, we will have it at the uh, booth this weekend. Um, I, I got notes from Joe Dabrowski. Uh, other than you know, nothing happens to it. Um, but you know, stuff's going to happen to it. Uh, so people can get pictures for five dollars with it. <laughs> um, and I'm sure there's some people that know the history. Um, I'm also I'm supposed to wear it whenever it's not at the booth. Yeah, to make sure nobody steals it. I don't know if this thing can fit me. I'm kind of a bigger guy. Get no, skinny. Sorry. Should we try? Should we, yeah, I have like what? Three All you days? have to do is just hold like one just, arm. Yeah, you can hold get one it on. arm in there. You know, we'll do this. We're testing this on the show. I haven't even tried this yet. This is about to get oh, I'm worried about this. Yeah. I'm worried about Everything this. looks better tighter because it makes you look like, you like that? tight and jacked. Yeah. You like that? I, no, I, I, I feel I feel buffer. I'm sure that's not really going on. Get a bunch of like sweet hearts and mouth them down, put them in a hypodermic needle, and inject them into your body before the show, and you're gonna feel so jacked. You're gonna feel on like cloud nine. Just get some steroids before the show and inject them into your body. <laughs> I'm a minority share owner, so I'll find you some. I'll get you some. I'll make sure it's not heroin. I'm just on video, man. What about what Eamon? He doesn't need steroids for his commentary. That's all right, man. I, I, We're not I'll saying anything. Th- I'll bad. take whatever will work. The government doesn't want people to have steroids because they're afraid that people are going to live longer. <laughs> All right, let's let's talk about uh, IWC. Your history there, um, of course. You've been you've seen a, a good chunk of IWC's history in person. I, I, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, ring crew for like a year and a half before I started wrestling. So you see a lot more. You see a lot more when you're on ring crew because all you do is set the ring, and then you just hang out and you see stuff happening if you do your job and pay attention. Unlike some trainees who just show up and don't load the ring or don't even come to load the ring they'll never hear this so it doesn't really matter i mean maybe they will maybe they will hear this if they do fuck you we know who you are we're gonna weed your ass out if not if you do your job god bless you i I, hey i always loaded the ring (laughs) sucks dude (laughs) well that's part of it right Oh, definitely, yeah. But like I said, you, you see more when you're on uh, Ring Crew because when you actually have to be on the show, you're like focused on your stuff. You don't really care. I mean, you watch the matches before you. Mm-hmm. There's been some awesome matches, some awesome moments. I got to meet a sexual man like you, and now I get to sit one on one with you alone without any physical co-hosts here. Oh, and the dog. Yeah, but the dog's with me. <laughs> What's your favorite IWC moment, Sorg, from 200 shows? From 200? Well, I haven't been there for 200 shows, but a good good chunk of them. But you own I guess. all 200. You're the, you're the uh, crypt keeper. I of guess. All the- <laughs> yeah. Whatever I can get my hands on. Unfortunately, the, the, the masters kind of went away. I was going to um, say, oh, but- did, are they gone? They vanished? Something happened. Something happened to them. But um, uh, no, it, it, which that, that's been kind of cool, though, to have that, like when somebody says, hey, remember that time? And I'm like, well, that was before. I Because I showed up late 2006 myself. Yeah. So um and i think at that time uh, you were you were team up with vendetta for one um you know uh, gambinos you guys were having some crazy four four way tag matches and that's one of my earliest kind of reasons i came back were those four way tag matches which i think were just highlighted in one of those articles we were just talking about too yeah i always got left out of the four way tags man that sucked it was oh, always oh uh, that's right you it was, it was always the gambinos, gambinos harassment and uh, you would be in a trash can j rock and ray yeah i always i would always come in <laughs> towards the end and have ray like Knock me silly or something. Babyface fire. Those guys. Those yeah. are some awesome matches, man. I wish like there was uh younger guys who would like have matches like that now. 
but hey, his lightning can't strike twice. You can only fall in love once, right, Sword? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it, it, it seems like uh, I don't know if it's just the shine on it from like when that that's when we got into it uh, with IWC, um, but there was definitely that kind of I, I guess that magic. You know, it felt like we kind of found something when we stumbled on on the group uh, again. The Gam- Gambinos, uh, Babyface, Fire of Shima, now DJ uh, Z. Um, uh, teaming with uh, uh, Jason Gorey now doing the Great Generation Dead stuff that we uh, talked talked with on on the show here previously. Um, who else? The Cleveland Mafia with Ray Rowe, who's now popping up uh, before his injury, of course, with Ring of Honor. Uh, who's a, oh sexual harassment was another great part of that kind of group. There was another one at the uh, what was it? Like the fifth anniversary, or hundredth anniversary show. It was uh, Gargano and Facada, and it turned mm-hmm. into like a five way. Yeah, they tried to do it a lot. They did a lot. There was a lot of those matches. Maybe you should put them all on one Blu-ray or digital Blu-ray. download because no one, no one buys DVDs. <laughs> That's true. Anymore. Nobody, nobody, nobody knows. Like about I those hate ones. when I go to buy something and it's only on DVD. It's like man, it's 2014. It's almost 2014. You want me to buy a DVD? Like get with the times. I ain't mm-hmm. gonna buy no DVD. I'll download that shit digitally before I fucking buy a DVD. I'm sorry. I'm passionate about. That type of stuff, Sorg. That's why me and you have such a connection. But I'm telling you, yeah, make it IWC's tag. Stuff. Hey, there's a four way tag this Saturday night. Maybe, maybe it'll steal the show. It'll be a real sizzler. It'll be the, it'll be, it'll be the comeback. I, I actually stumbled on. Um, I was going through footage for something else, and I stumbled on a four way tag they did in Cal U. The second, I think it was the second college, no, maybe it was the first college fight nights, and uh, did not. It was like Gregory Iron and 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 uh, Valentino were teamed up. Uh, some guys that look like the Gambinos as Mexican luchadors, oh, like it yeah. just it, it it didn't stack up uh, at that time. I think uh, I can let some insider knowledge out for the 200th anniversary. I think that was Dave Red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was Mickey Gambino. I think you're I don't right think too. Mickey couldn't make it for one night only. He was an Italian. Luchador. I think that was David Demira's first uh, match, technically, yeah. in IWC. He had such a badass name, Dave Red. I don't know why he'd go with David Demira. He's, like, he's, he's like the Richard Red. Blood steamboat of, yeah, of yeah, IWC. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, man, I wish you would have went with that. There was actually a... Uh, uh, we're just really just kind of flashing back here. <laughs> uh, somebody asked <laughs> whatever happened to David Demira like a month ago on the IWC <laughs> Facebook group. And I almost be like, well, he's doing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you gotta make up urban legends like Bigfoot, Bigfoot Red, Bigfoot Red. <laughs> Bigfoot Red. Oh, that's creepy. That sounds creepy. Bigfoot Red makes me think of like a uh, used tampon in a dumpster fire or something. Mm-hmm. That's all. Oh, that would be. That's the code. That's the code that comes across the radio when someone lights on a, a tampon, used thing, dumpster full, used tampons on fire. They go Bigfoot Red, Bigfoot Red, and fire department comes like. Um. Hey, I wanted to ask you. Uh, there's, there's kind of a conversation, Eamon, I think I saw you commenting on this before. Uh, the, the Facebook situation mm. um, about the, about the real names. Eamon? Oh, Amen. Me? Amen. <laughs> I, I don't remember exactly. Sorry, guys. I know refresh, just. Refresh me a bit. <laughs> Well, I, well, basically, I, I know Facebook's uh, apparently cracking down on. Oh, okay, yeah, I know what you're okay, talking about. Okay, okay, you see where I'm leading? I want, I want, I want to hand it over to you, man. To, to Jimmy specifically, but no, I yeah, I guess Facebook like is cracking down on like wrestler. If you're if you don't have a real name, apparently according to Facebook, they'll crack down on you, or whatever. So I know a lot of wrestlers have had to change their their Facebook names uh, because of it. Uh, That's crazy. It sucks. It should be your option. Like, how do they know what? Your name is, you know, exactly. That's like, just, like, I, they're, they're trying to get you to like put your cell phone on and put your your friggin' ID on. And so I hate Facebook. I only have Facebook because I have a child. It sucks because like you can't if you're a single guy and you're trying to get a girl's attention. Every time you like a girl's picture, the world's gonna know. Everybody knows everything. <laughs> That's why Facebook sucks, man. If you're trying to like creep on a girl and then like get with her in a nice way, but not creep, but not creep. You know what I mean? Use Instagram, use Twitter, bump into her with laundry mat or somewhere in public and ask for her number. Never use Facebook because everything's like saved on there too. So mm-hmm. if you guys ever break up and or something and she's going to be like, yeah, I got you saying you suck my feet and all this other stuff. It's 
I swear to God, Facebook was invented by women. It's like a giant digital Venus flytrap. Because the Venus flytrap looks like a vagina anyway. Facebook looks more like a vagina every time I go on it. So Facebook is a digital vagina with teeth. Because it's addicting. It mm-hmm. is. Don't get me wrong. There's mm-hmm. pictures. There's all that other stuff. But when you get down to it, it's everything about f- women. Hot on the outside. Deceitful on the inside. Treacherous. Tre- <laughs> treacherous. Like, it wasn't exactly where, what I was gonna, the angle I was going to go with the question. Um, but uh, I, I was kind of thinking your thoughts of, of the real name policy versus, you know, you know, wrestler names but Pl- justin Plummer hates when guys use their real name on uh he's always like you need to change your stuff sure. to jimmy demarco yeah for the longest time mine was jimmy demarco i only changed it once uh i started dating this girl and her family was like oh, i thought your last name was danello and then it really blew their mind because jimmy's not even my real first name i go by my middle name in wrestling and in real life so when people see my ID, it's, it's, that's not that's not unusual. But I know no, yeah. I know there's somebody else that so that's, does that's, the same thing. That's, so there's a thing right there. So even if you're not a wrestler and you're using your middle name on, are they going to crack down on you for yeah, that? Like yeah. it's it, well, and, and I know initially it was the um the first the first group that that got cracked down on this were um were uh, drag queens. Oh going man, going on there. How did that fly? Because nowadays, man, you can't mess with like transgender people, or yeah, like, they'll come down. Exactly. On you. Exactly. It, it was a big mess. Um, I, I, my my personal kind of advice, if anybody ever asked, was was you know obviously you have your own Facebook and it's you and you have your kid on there and everything. Um, but if you're gonna talk as say Jimmy DeMarco or or whatever you may be, like that's what the Facebook like maybe another account or Facebook fan pages are kind yeah. of the way to go, right? The way to go would be to go to the dickhead from zombie uh, world or whatever that kid's name is. The guy who runs Facebook, the movie. Character. I mean, I know that's not the dude. Oh, uh, Eisenberg. Yeah, Zuckerberg, Eisenberg. Yeah. Go to his house and just kick his ass. That's what I was saying the <laughs> other day. I was talking to DJ Z. Where are all the crazy people who fuck up the, the celebrities at? Like, all you ever hear anymore is crazy people messing up other regular civilians. Whatever happened to these like crazy people that were so crazy? Like, you know what, man, Kanye West, that goddamn son of a bitch, like, kick his ass, go get him. You never see that. I'm not saying kill anybody. Don't get. I don't want to see anybody die. But like, where's the crazy people who are dumping like blood on motherfuckers wearing fur? They're too busy like killing other crazy people or killing innocent people. It's time celebrities got to like taken down a notch, man. Like, it's like Zuckerberg, when he's walking out of whatever, like, vegan burger place he eats at, someone else should, should just turn him around and just give him five across the face. I don't want to do it into the microphone, but just not kick his that dude. There's nothing more. You know what's worse than getting the shit kicked out of you as a little kid? Get, having it happen when you're a man, because those days are supposed to be, like, gone. Physical violence is never the answer. So, especially, oh, he's like, oh, I'm rich. I just ate a vegan burger. I run Facebook. And you turn him around, just like, whack. He'll he he'll never sleep for like three days because he'll just be like, I was in my shell. I want to think, think the poor guy was probably beat up enough as a child. That oh, he, was he, he was came, he was he picked I mean, on? I, I mean, he that. had to have been right. He was like Uber geek. I didn't know that. He now had I feel to have been. Any of these guys, the Bill Gates, why do you think they work so hard? Because they got their ass kicked as a kid, and uh, you know, some people you know hit the gym and become a wrestler or a football player or whatever. Some guys. Build Facebook. I like Gates. I don't like Facebook guy because I just I hate Facebook. Maybe he always probably the coolest guy ever. But like I would love if I had like a Bill and Ted phone booth time machine or any kind of time machine. I'd go back in time. I'd come out of the phone booth and I'd see Lex Luger at like his most jackness. Like when he like uh, torture act the giant on Nitro or whatever. I would have him come back with me through the phone booth and go to Zuckerberg's house and just torture act him and film it and put it on instagram and put hashtag death to facebook and then that way luger could go back and no one would ever believe zuckerberg no one would, zuckerberg would never believe luger stepped out of a telephone booth and torture racked him then the, we, we run the problem of mind wiping luger because that could really fuck us like did you ever see the new x-men movie all the time shit i just rewatched it this morning <laughs> it's an awesome awesome movie but like imagine that where we send luger back with too much information about 2014 and we get back to our 2014 and it's just like luger shit everywhere that would actually honestly fuck up like the wrestling <laughs> time continuum or whatever the, the idea that like if luger understand understood all the like bullshit hogan stuff from that day like imagine like how many world titles he would win 
Oh my god! I didn't even him. think of that. Like I'm, I'm thinking about him taking over the world. He, he would definitely take over the wrestling world first, <laughs> and then he'd take over the actual oh, yeah. world. I can imagine him just coming out of the phone booth and just knocking Hogan's teeth out. <laughs> like you knew, you knew all along, you son of a bitch, you, you knew, and just like decking him. <laughs> Um, one question we ask, uh, well, kind of a double question we ask. Uh, I'm so I, I forgot I'm still wearing the vest. I should wear the rest of the show. On you, yeah, I was like, considering putting it on during the mayhem show. You'd think, think it's really white, good. but it's like a it's cr- not a nice white. Cream, it's like a like, cream. Like, yeah. I, yeah, did it used to be white? It used to be white when asshole wore it back in like uh, <laughs> asshole. Is that the affectionate name for Justin R D? I always just thought he was an asshole. Like when I, when I was a trainee, I was like, I remember the one time because uh. I looked over at Dean Radford and because I was like, asshole was on the tip of my tongue, but I wanted to be respectful. And Radford was like, he's a, he's a fucking asshole. He's an asshole. Everybody thought he was an asshole. I think he went on to become like an actor or something, which I don't really? know if it took off. JTM asked him for him. He had like glamour shots of the dude, like dressed up as like a 40s gangster with like a Tommy gun. <laughs> he but I think he, had, he like, wasn't at WrestleMania with CM Punk, I think was he? he had, no, no, no. This is before that, actually. And I think he had like vampire teeth in, too. So he was ahead of the curve on the whole like <laughs> vampire craze. Wow. Um, but anyways, we like to ask. Hey, you know, you've, you've ten years in the game. You've done a lot of crazy stuff. I've edited some crazy stuff from you. By the way, I, I don't know if you've ever talked about this on the show, but the best DVD uh, edit notes come from this guy. <laughs> They're handwritten. <laughs> they have illustrations that don't necessarily have anything to do with the thing. Uh, best line is "Use the shot where I kill the ninja." <laughs> when he's taking on facade, um, one of the mo- in- most interesting experiences I, got, I had. Uh, but what what are the uh, what, what's the best thing in your time with indie wrestling, and what's the worst thing? This going to be a moment, or this going to be a kind of a broad situation that you've experienced? Well, the best thing would be honestly meeting like people, because like I, you should never stop meeting people, because then that's how like when you die, when you're older, all your friends and family die. If you never stop meeting people and being friends with people, then you won't be alone. Because that's like what will kill you, man, a broken heart. So, like, getting to meet people. I got to meet you. I got to meet, like, pe- like friends I'll have forever, like Chuck, Shima, or DJZ, whatever. I still call him Shima. It pisses him off. Like, But uh, <laughs> he'll always be that to me. But uh, McChesney, like, I made a lot of, like, great friends. Like, And, and even, like... People who were who came to show as fans, like Spiker, I'm good friends with that guy. You came as a fan, I'm good friends with you now. Like, uh, that's a good memory. Match wise, I'll always remember my match with Shima at I with Norm's last show. And uh you know, you, plus like you learn there is bad shit too. Like what well, you say, like what was the other half of the question? Like what's the Yeah, the what's bad like kind shit? of the worst the worst thing about it, Andy Wrestling? Uh, nothing because it's so spectacular it's so awesome (laughs) get into indie wrestling and you'll never you'll never be frustrated you'll never be angry you'll meet nothing but the classiest people the most beautiful gals but yeah i mean uh, i i would say the worst thing is people who like take money from others and who are ignorant Mm -hmm. ignorant in the sense of like i don't know just be friendly why do you got to be a dick (laughs) like if people care enough to come and enjoy you do something, and in a lot of cases not do it all that fucking well, give them the courtesy of being like, hey, thanks for, for caring. You know what I mean? Because people like weird shit. So you should be happy that someone likes this weird shit because this shit's fucking weird. I mean, you might not <laughs> think it. Like, indie wrestling's fucking weird. Yeah, you yeah. might not think it. I walked away for two years. And I didn't even like think about it. And then I, I, I would peek in every once in a while. And then I like peeked in. And I was like, man, when I first started, I knew I was. This is fucking weird. And I it helped me keep like an even head. Like, mm-hmm. and then like the longer you're around it, you get used to the fucking weird. It's like being in prison, I guess. Like you'll never forget the first time you see a guy get raped. But then after that, you're kind of like, oh, hey, there's a uh, shoe shine Tommy over there getting raped. It's Tuesday. But then when you're gone for a while and you got to go back, you're like, oh, man, it's fun. It's fun as hell, but it's fucking weird. We're talking about indie wrestling, not rape. Yeah, indie wrestling, not prison rape. But they do. <laughs> you'd be surprised how much probably prison rape and indie wrestling have in common. <laughs> you got to avoid the, the shady people and just enjoy this, yourself. This is why This is why I separate from the locker room a little bit. I'm like, I'm doing my <laughs> thing. They're <laughs> doing their thing. I, I'm not 
Amen. Yeah. Amen. What would you say is the, the best thing and the worst thing about it? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Um, I'm going to put you on the spot like Michael just got me. I'm going to, yeah. Uh, well, best thing is just, I, I would just say going back to like the stuff you mentioned, like the people you meet. Like I, I've met the work with some cool people and stuff that I probably wouldn't even imagine I'd be, uh, be able to do. Uh, the worst thing is super hard from the fact that, I mean, I'm only a year and a half in, so it's kind of weird to like be like, this sucks. And I mean, yeah, you, you never want to be like super negative, but you got to be realistic about it too because it's like, yeah, there's stuff that sucks. I mean, you see a movie, you're I not going to like see, the whole fucking movie. You no, know, I definitely see like your thought like about like certain people and, and the way you sort of treat it, I guess, you, I guess is the best way to put it. Like the idea of, I mean, I mean to go with it, like what you said about how indie wrestling is very weird, but also it's very, you know, you know, small in the sense, you know, you're not making a big buck. So it's like, you know, don't be afraid to, you well, yeah, know. Like, in my opinion, the biggest thing is you can't chase people away. You got to mm-hmm. kind of bend over a little bit. Not, not bend over. I mean, like, <laughs> not bend over a little bit. That's wrong. Man, wow. I'm not even trying anymore. Uh, <laughs> you got to kind of like meet people halfway and be like, yeah, hey, why don't you come? Enjoy the show. Love the show. Mm-hmm. Be a part of the show. It's mm-hmm. fun. Have fun. Don't f- force people away with like creepy shit. Like not creepy shit. Now, are you talking about the wrestlers towards the fans in this instance? And everything. And everything. And fans. And like and you know, another thing is too. Like it's not 1984 anymore. There you can go mm-hmm. on YouTube and type in like how, how do I wrestle? And there's sons of bitches who have put it on there. Justin Incredible's mm-hmm. been doing a wrestling one on one thing. Yeah, That's so not you just can't say about anymore. You can't say anymore. Oh, you got to protect the yeah. business. It's 2014. Things are so different now. And is so it, it is is it so bad? And I know like you know, certain some some fans are overanalyzed, sit on their hands, but like oh, that was a bad suplex or whatever, you know. Yeah. And maybe got and, and I think those people like we try to step back. Yeah, a little I mean, bit and say okay again it's weird we're watching men in tights yeah like do stuff in a ring that's not even a real sport you, you got to kind of suspend disbelief because like to. what brings everybody to this whether it's amen or you or or anybody it's the smoke and mirrors that's what larry swain used to always say that that's what attracts people to pro wrestling is like the smoke and mirrors the the larger than life the oh man that would never happen in real life but it's funny as hell watching it now it's like a real life stunt show like, right. I mean, you can't go to Monster Truck Rally and be like, man, you would never be allowed to make that fucking right turn in traffic because mm-hmm. you, you're not there <laughs> for that. You can't. Anytime you take anything too seriously, you're taking the fun out of it. I mean, mm-hmm. if you go to see a movie, you're paying eight bucks or, or 12 bucks or whatever. Do you pull out your phone and go to your notepad and start writing like all your critique? Or are you going to sit there and watch the fucking thing and enjoy it? Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's instances where stuff really fucking sucks like i almost walked out of spider-man 3 i to this day it's the only movie i've i've, I've, I've ever walked the fuck out of like all right i've tamed so goddamn close when he started dancing down the fucking street with the emo hair and shit i was so <laughs> distressed over that fucking movie that like six days later i went to a um party at vicky gambino's house drank way too much whiskey and i was so I started talking to Shirley Doe about it, and I started smashing my head into this wall, thinking, like, what the fuck am I doing? I have a podcast for you that you should listen to, because yeah. we just talked about Spider-Man 3 recently. Oh, it's fucking terrible. It's like, horrible. Where, who the fuck was in charge when this happened? Because oh. one and two are like, one's good, two's great, and it's like, oh, they're building, it's you getting know, better. It, it felt like, because, you know, a lot of, like, like the online discussion, and we do it a lot, is like, what is going wrong with TNA and stuff like that? That's exactly how we discussed Spider-Man 3. Yeah. yeah, it's like sometimes you see this stuff and you're like, that's why it all goes back to weird. Entertainment's weird. Uh, wrestling's weird. Every form of entertainment's fucking weird because you got so many in- eccentric people with bigger personalities. And sometimes they just wake up one day and they're like, I'm going to do something really fucked up because I can. <laughs> and I'm just going to get away with something really fucking weird today. Like, hey, we're going to have Tobey Maguire get possessed by a violent fucking alien, but we're going to have him do dance numbers instead of drive pal drive guys heads through uh windshields and brutalize criminals no let's just have him get an emo haircut and uh tap dance he'll become a really good fucking dancer like who how that, that's like when they put rockets on the friggin penguins and batman or nipples on the bat suit like how much coke i would love to know how much coke was being snorted by the motherfuckers in charge of that hey let's put titties on the bat suit Let's put a fucking rocket on a little penguin and just say he can walk and shoot it off. 
Did we answer the question? I think so. I think we answered the question about wrestling and movies. Yeah, <laughs> man. It's it's very similar. So just splice this into a uh, into movie minute. As we're well. gonna ta- yeah, we're gonna tag it. I'm just gonna send this clip over because he hasn't released that episode yet. So although I think he has a clean tag. Um, so, <laughs> hey, congratulations! Of course, uh, Mr. Dombrowski did a a IWC 200 uh, uh, in the style of the what was that the PWO five PWI 500, which you've made that list a few times too. It could be the PWO 500. PWO. Dombrowski <laughs> used to do PWO. He was Mr. PWO. The original PWO in my mind is the one in the WEW. Oh the, Jesus! The, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one. The ladies. Nice. That's what the P stood for. Uh, uh, <laughs> actually, you can find that's that. a great list Dombrowski put together, man. It took some freaking time. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but of course yourself uh in the top 10 your number six uh uh slid right in there between uh you beat aj styles <laughs> but super oh, hentai is up there at number five i know like uh like the politically correct answer is man i'm I'm so happy to even be on that list which i, I truly i am man there's a lot of freaking great talent if you look at that list like a lot of random talent too like you got sergeant slaughter on one page yeah, yeah. And you got CM Punk. It's crazy. But I wanted to be higher. That's bullshit that I was number six. <laughs> I'm minority share owner, so technically I should be like 1A. You know? I'm surprised Norm didn't weasel his way on this list. Norm could have been like uh, <laughs> just a star. Like there's one, and then Norm created a number. The next number. It's just like some symbol. That's Tied for first. Buried in some pyramid for years. Norm Connors has it. Necromancer. (laughs) (laughs) And he's still wearing the purple tracksuit. Oh, yeah. that's He says he won't be there, but I'll shit if he comes down from the ceiling in like a purple suit or like they wheel out a casket. Okay, I take that last (laughs) part back. I take that last... I was only saying that because like Undertaker... Well, I mean, not Undertaker, like the job. The Undertaker, the wrestler. To to disclaim, he is in real life, he's a... He works at a funeral home. Yeah, so we, yeah, we can yeah. say that, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm just because I just want to make sure for well, those. You can't mock it, though. You can't. No, mock no, it. no, no. I can't. I can't mock it. You can mock it. <laughs> he can't do anything to you. He wants to stop talking to me. I don't feel that. <laughs> uh Jimmy, it, it's been awesome. Of course, this weekend you are actually in a match, technically. Oh yeah, I'm picking the team. For, uh, I'm picking, bringing back. Oh, you're just picking the team. Okay, I'm picking the team. I, 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 I'm reading this image wrong. So, oh yeah, it's because they use the image of me where I'm like shirtless. Yeah, I'm minority <laughs> owner. Do now. you have a picture? Like, do you have like a picture where you're like wearing a tie or something? No, I guess like, I, I think I'm gonna have to get that this uh, this Saturday. I'm gonna have to take. You should a picture dress up. Of you should um, um, steal something from Plumber's Closet. Jeez. I couldn't fit into any of his stuff, man. I'm when I go to get like fitted for tuxes at weddings, I swear they see the measurements and they're like, "This is like fucking Lord of the Rings dwarf. This can't be a real person." Because my legs are like 29 inches or short as hell, but then like my shoulders are like slightly larger than most five foot six, five foot seven gentlemen. So I don't think I'd fit into anything in plumber's closet. I might be able to fit into hard ass Hooven's clothes, but he dresses like a slob like me. I have no style. <laughs> Amen. You got to send me some ties. I will. <laughs> yeah, you get dressed up. You should see this captain said he has on Facebook. I don't wear ties, but yeah. So we're going to have to stop at Walmart before the show Saturday and get a nice little ensemble piece. Like You know, we can go shopping. We can film it for the site. It'll be a nice little, uh, you know, WWE always has their nice uh, uh, side <laughs> day, a day Bottom with the series. We'll yeah, the song about. will have to be like Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. Because <laughs> it's like fun and upbeat. It's modern. It's like, yeah, guys' day shopping. Sorg and Jimmy. <laughs> hey, uh, tell me, what are you excited about this weekend with the uh, IWC's 200th episode? Right. Jeez, show. It is technically an episode. It I is an episode. Except, Most of them are an filmed. Episode, yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. It, it's just exciting to see it make it to 200. Um, I don't know. I'm happy. To, I think McChesney and M Dog will probably be the best match because McChesney he's you know he deserves he so deserves to be number one on that list because he's freaking crazy he still get he still gets as excited now is when I met like first met him mm-hmm. like because I was messing with him I don't want to name any names but I said hey so and so is on the show I'm just telling you now as minority share owner he fucking stole it just don't you don't <laughs> you try don't you even try and top him because it belongs to him now and instead of writing back he called me back 
and he, he never calls. He's like, you son of a bitch. I'm fucking stealing the show. Uh, he took it personal. I like that. I wish more people took it personal when I challenged them to steal the show. I like to make bold ass nine challenges to people. I like to eat big ass steaks too. Before every <laughs> IWC show, I eat a fucking semi raw steak. And then I'm like, yeah, yeah. I have throw up like half of it, but I'm fucking ready <laughs> for war. When I hear that corny ass entrance music kick in, whatever Christian rock song Chuck picks, I'm like, yeah, yeah, IWC 200. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna see this and he's gonna be like now i'm gonna get a text he's gonna say now that you're minority share owner that's not really good behavior <laughs> you have to pull it back a little bit i don't even write on twitter anymore i just retweet all the time because he's like ah oh, come on that's a little much what you're writing on twitter <laughs> but IWC speaking of which iwc promoter IWC on twitter oh yeah i had that name i had that name I saw that it was uh, available, <laughs> so I squatted on it like six months ago. You know, you know I saw it. I, I was like one of, probably one of the first ten people you followed, it looked like. Oh, yeah, I did. As soon as I got it, I followed you. I, that used to be a little inside fact on that. That was Norm's AOL Instant Messenger name. I IWC, IWC promoter. promoter at AOL.com, I think, was the email. What was it? You used to play some real, real uh, random rap beat from the time, whenever he would sign off and on. I think it was Jesus Walks. He'd come on, he'd sign online and you're Jesus. I wasn't Walks. on AOL Instant Messenger with him, thankfully. Oh, dude, I used to always like, I would make up fake names to mess with them with. And I'd be like, uh, you know, when are you bringing in Hulk Hogan? When are you bringing in Ric Flair? He actually ended up bringing in Ric Flair. This is like 03, 04. I'd always like make up fake AOL screen names to message him and be like, yeah, it's checking out your ass the last show. He would never respond, except for the one he wrote, don't fuck with me. I don't play games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it took me like I would come up, I would be out drinking one night and I'd go on one of my fake AOL names and I'd be like yeah hey fuck you <laughs> and he'd be like I don't have time for fucking games but it was a stupid one I asked him like if he, I was like if you show up at the dorm on Eaton Park I'll buy your meal but then I want to fucking fight you as soon as we're done eating and he wrote back fuck you I don't have time for games Challenging his manhood at Dormont Eaton Park is what brought that out, dude. Because Eaton Park will bring out the fucking beast in you if you're from Western Pennsylvania. You want to throw down. So- Sorg knows. Yep. I hear your stomach growling from here. Sometimes when I'm shirtless in the ring, I hear Pedro DeLuca's stomach growl. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It fucking does. I sense it. Jimmy DeMarco, he's there this weekend. International Wrestling Cartels Retro Reunion 200. 200th episode. 200th episode of IWC <laughs> Wrestling. <laughs> hey, did you like whenever I was counting the pins at the last show? And it was two. I'd say two. We need two cameras. I don't know if you caught that. Yes, I was I like, two. That. Two cameras. I don't know how they do it. It sucks, man. You're fucking wrestling. I wasn't even wrestling. I was refereeing. And I would count three, and I would go to look at the ringside camera to give them a little slice of the action. And I'm like, holy shit, there's no ringside camera. It's just this over here. Well, maybe as minority uh, uh, shareholder. I told Chuck, uh, I said, can... man, I just felt like I walked through the snow with one boot on. What the fuck is going on? I got frostbite all over my toes. He was like, don't give me asshole analogies like that. Leave me alone. Stupid metaphors. Fuck, 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 fuck. And I heard the fuck echo as he walked away. I'll see you Saturday, Sword. I'll see you, Jimmy. Amen. The the jet, the private jet, Con Air is coming to pick you up. Awesome! I I can't I can't wait. I, I, I'll Can we get a yeehaw? <laughs> Did you think I forgot? He's the less <laughs> Texas person. I'm... I know you're from Texas. Billy Johnson's moving to Texas. He's coming to live with you. Is he? <laughs> no, he really is moving to Texas. He's, but he, I hope he does come to live is, with so you. So he's following Shane Taylor and uh, Ray Rowe. I'm telling you, man, Texas is taking all our guys. Well, no, Ray Rowe and fucking, fucking uh, Shane everyone, Taylor were from Cleveland. I was going to say, everywhere else in America is taking ours. So we gotta get I, up hey, I, I'm okay with Shane Taylor moving away because he threatened to take my my wife from me. Really? Yes, he did. <laughs> Man, he's a passionate guy. He Sexual is. chocolate. <laughs> Jimmy, add a, add a IWC <laughs> promoter on the Twitter. Check him out this Saturday. IWCWrestling.com for all the info. And, of course, the DVD, digital download, all that will be available shortly. Once everything goes well, 
uh, at SorgatronMedia.com. And check out those articles while you're at it. Find out if you don't know, if you're new to IWC Wrestling, hearing it just because of this show or anything like that, uh, go check out those, those articles. Check out all the names. You beat CM Punk on the list. Hey, I can't wait until my daughter is old enough to understand the English because I'm going to tell her what I did. I beat CM Punk <laughs> on a list for top 200 international wrestling cartel. Not internet wrestling community, internet wrestling cartel, international wrestling, internet wrestling cartel. <laughs> I'm gonna have the name change. That we need to change the name because now everyone thinks IWC is the internet wrestling community. So I think we should just change the name to like Muscle Boy Outrageous Explosion Wrestling. Should Muscle we, Boys of Wrestling's Explosion. We should have a poll on Facebook. Yeah, we'll change it. Sort of. All right. We need to get the <laughs> f out. And with that, we got plenty more uh, indie wrestling to talk about, Eamon. Thanks, Sorg. And, and yeah, we're going to talk about some of the indie wrestling that happened, uh, particularly uh, some of the stuff that happened this past weekend, uh, uh, especially uh, stuff that happened uh, in the PA area. Uh, and to help us with that, joining us uh, on the line uh, is our, our frequent guest of the show, Hot Wheels. How are you, sir? I am doing very well there, Eamon. Uh, how about yourself? Fantastic. Also, uh, we have a double special guest this week uh, in the discussion portion of the show. Uh, one, the one and only Riz. Hi, Riz. How are you? Is this is your first time. This is your first time on Andy Mayhem. No. Show. Bullshit it is. I think it is. No, it's not. Is it not? It's not, sir. When was the other time? <laughs> I have been on this show before. When? <laughs> I'm not sure, certain, but I think I will. I think he's, he's assisted talking about uh, IWC shows. And I, stuff I talked to attended. IWC before. So. I feel like, okay, well, it's been a long time. It's been a good while. I've missed you. <laughs> but, you know, I always well, like having Riz, Riz on cause somebody else because, I, you know, I, I usually witness the show through my monitor for the most part, so I maybe don't have a good sense of the show. You get at mm-hmm. least, like, th- typically you're at the DVD booth helping us out, so you get to witness the show. You know, mm-hmm. as a fan for the most part. So uh, in, in this case, I was not at RWA this past weekend. Uh, I discussed on, on my Good Morning podcast on uh, uh, Sorgatron.com. I've been mentioned, I think, on Twitter. Uh, the guys, uh, JP and Chachi, who usually uh, helped me out. And, of course, uh, Joe Balls was there, too. Uh, they did the full setup, which is the first time that they've done a full live switch setup with all the bells and whistles without me. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> yeah, um, which I'm they really impressed. Or- What's that? They don't need you, Sorg. They don't, they they don't need really me. Well. They don't need me. Apparently, I'm done with pro wrestling. So, there you <laughs> oh. go. Um, so, I actually told Jimmy, I won't see you Saturday. These guys are going to take over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyways. But, uh, but but no, I, I got to the witness to show at least like kind of uh, recording it back off a of tape so I could I could set it up for DVD. Uh, but I wanted to get uh, especially start with and you know, fill in any gaps in wheels. But I wanted to get Riz's impression of his very first Renegade Wrestling Alliance show. You know, um, this is going to sound really bad, but it's not. Don't don't get me wrong. Okay. Because I've been in IWC. I've been a fan of IWC for probably two, three years, maybe more. Um, holy crap! This was way different. Like it, it just seemed more compact within the the way the thing that I would think of indie wrestling, but it did it did prove a point, which was it didn't. I'm not saying it was a bad show. It was a great show. Uh, it was it was a great setup for uh, salute to the troops, which is which does it looks awesome. Uh, it's just so awkward to go to another show when you've been to a different, you've been to another show before. So and you've so only you, been to one show. You, you, so you haven't been to any other indie than IWC? Honestly, no. Wow. Wow. So you don't, you don't know how the other halves live. I mean, God, I, there's five promotions in the area. Yeah, I, I, so. I've no, I've noticed that and I was close to going to a few and I should get out there more, uh, I'm actually starting to get friends who are actually wrestlers, uh, co-workers, stuff like that. Um, I need to go see some of their events shortly. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for RWA, I was I was excited to go to this, and I was I wasn't disappointed. That that that's for sure. Uh, 
I can I can barely tell you what happened until the end of the and end of the night when somebody's mother got pile drived. <laughs> <laughs> like that's uh, I, honestly when I was driving home that night, I had to just think back and over and over and over again to the things that that I just saw. And the only thing that came back to me was uh, Mitchell, right? Ryan Mitchell. Yeah, Ryan Mitchell. Ryan Mitchell's mother just got power drive. (laughs) Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't see that in IWC. I don't think I wouldn't see that anywhere else Mm -hmm. in, in, I probably wouldn't see that in VWO, which is in, is it it vicious outcast? VOW actually. Oh, was it? VOW, Vicious Outcast V-O-W. Wrestling. Yeah, that's, and I, I wouldn't. See, I don't think I would see that in that show. I wouldn't see that in any other show besides RWA, because honestly, the those fans and that fan reaction to that happening was, um, it was amazing. Something I I'd, I'd never seen before. Like the, the just the fan interactions between. When the when the dad got in, to when everybody was hovering around the mother, to when the mother came in, to everyone just flipping out, and I, it, it's just that little tight knit community of wrestling fans in in the RWA community that that really really got that moment, and it really made a good ending to a a good show. Um. I don't know if that seemed like anything to either one of you for editing or for you, for you wheels for being there as well uh, for audio, but that's just my take on it. Uh, it left, it left me with a lasting image that quite honestly, I don't think I'm going to get rid of in a while. <laughs> it's kind of scarred you, hasn't it? <laughs> to be yeah, honest. It's a scarring moment. I, it's like, yeah that moment happened right in front of your face mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not know. I, I, honestly, I didn't know it was happening because <laughs> uh cue ball Carmichael uh, usually does, I believe a pedigree for his finisher. Okay. Like, yeah. Pedigree type maneuver. Uh, so when he put, when he put her in the position, I sat there and I'm like, Oh, he's just going to, he's just going to do the pedigree. And then he picked her up, and I'm like, "Oh, like it was, it was in slow motion." And then it happened, and it just all exploded in front of me. Yeah, <laughs> I, didn't know what I, was, I didn't know what I was seeing. Uh, maybe somebody can cover me <laughs> on that one, but it was it was it was something that I wouldn't, I would probably never see again in an indie federation. Right. Or you'll see it often now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, you know, I think the closest I've seen to this, uh, I, I was talking, I think I was talking with my wife about this. Um, you know, we've seen Justin Idol's pregnant girlfriend get DDT'd before. Yeah. You know, that, that's kind of different because she's not 50. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it was, it was just weird seeing this moment happen in front of me, and I'm like, I, "He's 50." <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the dad's been involved and gotten beat up before. That's nothing new. Yeah, that, that's what I heard. That's what I heard before. Yeah, his, Shane Taylor was, was the one who beat him up the first. Yeah, got, yeah. And beat up Mitchell's dad. So I mean, if I'm Ryan Mitchell, I'd keep my family away or put him behind a <laughs> cage or something, or because. Yeah, you, you, you gotta just uh, don't tell me they're gonna be put in the cage. <laughs> don't put baby in the corner. Yes, <laughs> no. yes. But like I said, the other sh- the other stuff in that show, uh, G Raver is amazing. Uh, I, this is my first time seeing G Raver in oh, a wow. ring. He's he's a pretty damn good wrestler. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. That was one of my favorite matches there. I agree, Riz, um, with. Just watching him, Sorg will tell you, when you get a chance to come down again, check out G Raver and Glory together. Just it's like mm-hmm. watching poetry in motion. Mm-hmm. They're they're like I, I can I can imagine those two together 
because I've seen Gory and now I've seen G Raver. And just picturing that in my head, I can just picture them just doing all sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, it's just amazing how good he is in the ring. Uh, other than that, uh, I do like I, I do like me some Serafini. Yes. Uh, that, again, that was Serafini. I don't think that was my I don't think that was my first time seeing her. You probably seen her in IWC before, but that I mean that was a long time ago. Yeah, then that was she has improved a lot from then. Then uh, she's pretty damn good at what she does too. Uh, but. Am I missing a few matches that are that are just skipping my mind here? I mean, Shoots there are up. other matches, but, but I mean, I'll tell you what. It, the ones you mentioned are the ones that stuck out to me the most because, yeah. honestly, and I talked to the boss. In my mind, I felt, besides G. Raver and in the first half of the show, everything else was like, okay, it's a wrestling show. But G. Raver, Serafini... Mitchell, Edmonds, Cuball, and Taylor. Those were the matches that stuck in my head. Mm-hmm. The only reason I'm going to mention this person's name is because I had fun picking on him. Danimal. <laughs> oh, <they're laughs> Dan- I'm still Danimal. trying to figure out Danimal. He's this lar- larger ah. guy wearing all blue. I know last month he came out in um, in um, in blue hair. Uh, so uh, I-, I don't know what to make of him just yet. Yeah. I mean, I, I just he I was, just enjoy picking on him when I'm sitting in there doing the sound. Danimal's a, f- a fan favorite, I can tell. Is he? He, he was like, when he came out. It was a nice like party atmosphere for that, and it was mm-hmm. pretty cool. Uh, and that's the only thing I can remember from that match. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and he didn't even win that match. He's but that's the only <laughs> thing I can remember. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so what else happened? Uh, so, we'll how about Sam Bass and Lucio Devere? Another cowbell in oh, RWA, yeah. I must say. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was weird because when, when, when the cowboy came out, and I know I was in, I, I was in Greens, uh, near Greensburg, uh, which, is, which is, let's face it, a nice little... Uh, out a, a town that's out there, not, yeah. not not in the suburbs. It's in it's more rural. 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 I can't even rule my R's for that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I, I was surprised that there was a cowboy that they hated, <laughs> and it, yeah, it was just. Oh yeah, the the other, who was the uh, other guy that was there? Uh, the other one I already forgot was Lucio, Lucio Devere. Yeah, he, was his opponent. So, and he, you can tell he's part of the De- Generation Dead crew. Uh, because I mean, not not only does he have the looks, but he does do some things in that ring that are pretty damn good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's not he's not G Raver or Gory yet. He's just moving on that and up I think, that ladder, and I think he is a younger wrestler in general. I think he is a little yeah. greener, so right. Uh, but he's coming. He, he has a lot of room to grow on that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, but that crowd is definitely behind him. Also, and I mean, just how you're saying, like the crowd interaction and everything with the RWA crowd, it's like Sorg and I have talked about RWA is its own different beast compared to an oh, IWC or a VOW or a PWX because it's like some of those fans go to might go to those other ones, but it's like I said to Sorg and Sorg I think mentioned to me the interaction and the feels that this crowd delivers to the wrestlers is like the most supernatural high I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. I mean, they truly get behind the wrestlers. Yeah, like I, that's one thing I can I can say off 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 for fact here. I've I have never seen a crowd so hyped, an indie crowd so hyped for a wrestler 
than I, than I've had with G Raver and Ryan Mitchell. And, you know, yeah. and also I, those two guys the, are just. The, 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 say it, that, like, like, like I've seen crowds explode when an AJ Styles comes in IWC or 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 you know somebody big like that, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I, but the point is, this, this is our local talent. This is yeah. This these is aren't local. these aren't people. These aren't fly by night. This isn't Bret Hart rolling in the Night of Legends or something, right? This, this isn't right. this isn't the Ring of Honor guy swinging in. Um, these hey. are the every month guys, and they they have that following. Um, and uh, you know, it, it, I don't think that happens to that effect uh, in a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't really see it. I mean, it, it's every time I get ready to play that music and I just look at my playlist and I'm like, I know as soon as I hit just the three chords of this song or of a G rave or, or a Ryan Mitchell, I know that roof's about to blow off the plate. And it's, mm-hmm. it's just amazing. It gives you goosebumps. Just knowing the anticipation of how that crowd's going to react. And that's, that's amazing to hear like that reaction happen in that local indie setting that you guys have made. It's not, yeah. it's it, 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 just to show you where the location is. <laughs> I had to park on a one way street, like right next to the park, right next to the uh, venue. Mm-hmm. And it is as big as my room. It's probably big as twice as my room. And it was filled to the brim of people screaming their heads off. Yeah. That, that, that's indie wrestling. That's a perfect example. Like I know, I know IWC fills bigger and does all that stuff. But if you want good, like at, at a good picture of what some, most indie wrestling is, it's that small setting. You know, no, there's no parking lots, but there's no. there's good wrestling that's inside there. It's like a big old bubble around around the RWA crowd. And that that's amazing how that works. And I was shocked by that. Oh yeah. I mean so we're gonna have to even mention RWA has come a long way since it began. I'll mm-hmm. admit, beginning of RWA, I was like, okay, this is my home fed, I enjoy it. And I'm I like it. I'm right now Soon to be six, six years later going, I don't like RWA. I love RWA. I love our fans. I love our wrestlers. Mm-hmm. I mean, the shit we've gone through and gotten to warms my heart because it's just amazing how far we've come. Awesome. It, um, it shows. It actually shows how far you've come by the – by the atmosphere you've got and by the talent that you've accumulated over that six years. So mm-hmm. it's amazing how that t- happens. Awesome. Well, Riz, I'm glad to, uh, uh, you know, see you enjoyed your first show out there. Something different. I did. Um, now, different. now I won't I be able to keep you away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um awesome so go check that out uh the rwa bloody harvest uh six is actually already available on digital download and we're taking orders for dvds that should be shipping this week uh over at sorgatronmedia.com and check out the info a uh, big salute to truce we'll be talking to talking about uh in the next several weeks leading up um of course uh featuring hurricane helms is going to be on that sanjay dutch shane douglas for instance uh as well as all the great people we've been talking about here with rwa so uh amen is there anything coming up in the wrestling this weekend i don't have anything in pittsburgh oddly enough other than what we already talked about with uh, IWC. Other than, yeah we mentioned that uh, obviously iwc's 200 events uh but other than that uh there's some stuff happening in the chicago area sort of a a, a bi-yearly tradition yeah bi-yearly yeah that's correct uh that is shimmer wrestling holding their events on the 18th and the 19th they're holding four uh dvd tapings and, and those events always turn out to be, you know, very obviously, you know, people travel across the country for those events because they are sort of big things. Um, and, you know, Shimmer bringing in the top female wrestling talent, not just from the U.S., but from all across, you know, uh, all across the uh, world, really. Uh, Canada, Japan, England, you know, uh, this is sort of the mecca for uh, women's professional wrestling. So if you want to go check them out at the uh, at the Berwyn Eagles Club in Berwyn, Illinois, uh, you can go to... Uh, 
I believe it's shimmerwrestling.blogspot.com. Yes, these days, Dave, you still have a blogspot. Um, but uh, you can get your tickets through there, I believe. I believe you can't get front row anymore. Those are completely sold out. But uh, definitely, if you plan on being in that area, Shimmer is definitely one of the shows to check out. So definitely go support them and, and go support independent wrestling and more specifically women's independent wrestling. In awesome. good, uh, really good independent independent women's wrestling. That's a lot of modifiers, but <laughs> I, I know a lot. <laughs> Awesome. Go check them out. And as usual, go check. Hey, when's your uh, Battle Wars coming out on uh, SmartMark? Uh, hopefully very soon. Uh, I believe uh, the June event that we had uh, should be on SmartMark very soon. It's been sent to them. Uh, it just hasn't gotten up on their site yet. Uh, but keep uh, also keep an eye out. We will be uh, hopefully getting our stuff up through some mediums uh, uh, besides SmartMark Video as well. Uh, possibly Amazon. Uh, uh, keep an eye out for that stuff. Really? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, some cool stuff is coming up in the works. Uh, uh, so yeah, I would say definitely keep an eye out for that. I hope we'll be able to reveal some more information uh, soon. Uh, and then the next time you'll get to see Inspire Pro, uh, we'll be at uh, the big Fun 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 Fest event in, in about a month, a little less than a month, uh, awesome. at Auditorium Shores in Austin, Texas. You know, uh, Wiz Khalifa's performing, Judas Priest. Uh, there's comedy happening. There's a taco cannon. Uh, and there's going to be professional wrestling. So uh, it's going to be a fun weekend. So that's where you can check out Inspire Pro Wrestling. Taco Cannon. Taco <laughs> Cannon, as in, a can, taco cannon. As, in, as in a cannon that shoots tacos. And, and yes. that's, that's it. Exactly as, exactly as it sounds. Wow. Because that's... Austin. Because Austin and weird stuff. And yeah. You must awesome. get video of this taco cannon. So I can watch this. Um, go check that out. And of course, IWCWrestling.com for the show this weekend. At, uh, uh, at IWC Promoter on Twitter for Jimmy DeMarco. Thanks to him for joining us here in studio and taking his time out to come on over. Um, and of course, uh, Eamon, he's over also over at uh, NWARingside.com. Is that right? NWARingside.com is the official website. You can also go there to uh, order their uh, NWA Ringside magazine, which I'll hopefully be contributing some uh, articles to as well. So that's, that's really cool stuff. Uh, I actually met the guys that runs it at uh, the last Inspire Pro Wrestling show. And, and they like the, uh, they like the work that I've been doing for the Inspire Pro program. So they wanted me on. So nice. it's a, it's a fun new project I'm taking up. So nice. He's all over the place. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> He's doing things and stuff. Getting and, everywhere. And Look at Whatever. it. RWALive.com to find out information uh, about that show we were talking with. At the E Riz on Twitter is at Hot Wheels RWA. Fred, the other guy over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for wheels, of course. And uh, you can check us out. We're at WrestlingBamShow.com for all the shows we do during the week. Five podcasts. We're up to five podcasts that we're doing lately. Uh, partially hinged on Riz's shoulders some weeks. Uh, so, so be, be, most weeks. Make sure to check out NXT and 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 uh, NXT TNA wrap ups on uh, Thursday, as well as the Wrestling Game Show. You can check those at wrestlinggameshow.com. dot com. You almost uh, said Game Him Show. Almost, almost. <laughs> iTunes, it's Stitcher, it's YouTube, Spreaker, uh, iHeartRadio for Indie Mayhem Show, or look up Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed that has all that stuff for doing wrestling. Um, also, please uh, big shouts to BasicSickness.com uh, for the music for our intro and outro. Go check out free stuff over there at mayhem show on twitter wrestling mayhem show on facebook and google plus and you can join us here tuesday at 11 p.m eastern time at live.sorgatronmedia.com please check out support the shows patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show pro wrestling t slash wms as well thanks amen thanks aaron thanks riz thank you and be sure to support some indie wrestling Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Eating for the oh. taste of the poor. Yeah. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. When you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>